present. Yeah. Tell us about the presentation. Yeah, the yeah. So we met with Neuro that next week. Uh, we met with uh, Matt McCall, who's one of the best mentors, advisors, and venture capitalists in Chicago. That man is so helpful. Great um, guy. Terrific yeah, guy. he's a great guy. And he, I sat there in the room with him and Steve, and <laughs> yeah. I remember Mike remembers. I remember you walked away heated. No, no. Uh, well, this is before. Well, so the quick thing of how we ended up deciding over the Obama campaign is like Neil had the first meeting with New World, and he had a you know, great presentation, and then he was like, wait, but we have this one thing. We, we had this Obama campaign. We have to decide, we between, have to decide Obama. between the Obama or the Code Academy idea. It's like, but if we get the money that we need, we will do it. And then <laughs> that's this. when Matt McCall said, we will get you the money. We will get you and the so money. And so that's when going to the Moxie Awards, when through that summer, we actually <laughs> didn't get the money. So we turned on Obama. <laughs> actually, my mom actually forwarded me the Obama decline letter that we sent in. Um, so we had until like, you know, 5 p.m. on this date, date in May to uh, send in the decline letter. So we sent it in. Um, and we decided, like, we're going all in. We're going to get this money. It's going to be great. We're going to build a school. And then from June of 2011 to August of 2011, we basically spent, like, trying to get the money. So we actually never got the money. It was the due um, diligence. Yeah, the due that diligence whole due diligence game. game. I was on the other side of the table finally. Yeah, how'd it work? It was great. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it was, it, it was good because they asked us a lot of tough questions. Yeah. But at the end of the day, nobody believed that there was a market for this. No, yeah. Like, they didn't, nobody believed that we actually could find people so, so, to pay. So they end up... Great people, but they end up saying, we're not going to invest. Not necessarily. No. no. Yeah. So I convinced, it got to the point where right around like the time we were about to launch the website, it was finally coming together. You know, Jim Dugan, who was my boss at OCA Ventures, CEO, mm -hmm. another amazing person in Chicago, just one of the best people for Chicago and the venture capital community. Jim, uh, you know, Matt and Steve and all these great people came together and they were going to yeah. hook us up with the resources we needed. And right before that happened, we launched our website. And when we launched our website, we learned something that we could have never imagined, which I mentioned before. The demand was incredible for this. And once we had proven the demand, and basically they said, all right, we're ready to do the deal, I said, on second thought, I think we'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. So that was what so, Mike so, meant when he said, thank you, New World, for not giving yeah, us money. We basically we ended up our, becoming a bootstrap We company. backed our way into a bootstrap on business. Which worked out. Yeah. So these guys, so in, in his thank you speech, you know, usually you thank your fir we're first funder, and uh, and Mike thanked the people who didn't give him money, which I think is the first <laughs> in venture capital history to have. Well, be, be thanked for not giving Make it money. history. I will check that out. One day at a time. But we also did, I mean, what we talked about earlier. Um, kind of it's legendary. I mean, yeah. the only thing I heard about the next day was your talk. <laughs> well, it was really funny because after I said that, like the first person that greeted us was Matt, Matt McCall. McCall. He came over and gave us <laughs> and a big felt, hug. He felt so bad. He's like, oh, I feel so, like, I feel so bad. You know, it was all love. It was, but it was great. Jamie yeah. thought it was funny. Oh, yeah. It which was, which was it my was great. It's a great success. But we yes. also thanked our, the first 35 students who, you know, uh, you know, paid up front. Like that. Gave that us the changed, confidence that, that changed to the say game. no to them because we basically had made the money that we were going to get in the loan from the you know VCs. So okay, so you're you're running Code Academy. Things are going well. Let's talk a little bit about um, be evolving into the starter league. Okay. Yeah. So how did how did that, that well, happen so, and so, how did you get the investment? Well, I, I will say though that running Code Academy was going well. That's not all like just you know kicking rocks. You know, it's simple. It sounds simple now, but when you look back, we did all that work. But then day one, yeah. we're on the second floor of Groupon. There's 10 cubicles, 10 cubicles and 20 chairs. Uh, so we had 17 people in one class, 18 people in another. And our instructor standing with a cardboard box and his computer on top of it, that was his podium. Um, that was our class. And the wall, the wall was green because it's Groupon. And that's not good for a projector that we had mounted on another cardboard box. So we got uh, white sheets of paper. And we taped all the pieces of paper together, and we taped it on the wall. And that was our projector wall. So, and then we're sitting there on the first day, after these people paid us thousands of dollars, we're like, we're about to teach you guys how to code. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be fine. Yeah. So, uh, but what ended up happening was something special. We did it. We did it. Like, they, they learned, they prototyped, they shipped, they built things, they got jobs, they started companies, they did all the things that we dreamed of in three months. And once that happened, we were off to the races. So yes, 35 students next quarter, 56 students next quarter, 88 students next quarter, 93 next quarter, 120. And it was just incredible, like that whole experience and how this culture formed and how these amazing people from all over the world decided that it was worth quitting their jobs 
and moving to Chicago yeah. to, to change their life and to learn some of the hardest skills you can learn in the software, in this, this world of technology and entrepreneurship. So yeah. I, don't, I just didn't want to gloss over that because no, while no, we great. did become yeah. the starter league, they were, like that whole time is really what made us who we are. Yeah. So I mean, the stories are like the most powerful thing. Like when Neil talked about that first week of interviews, uh, you know, for the six months before then, we were just the crazy ones in our apartment saying, like, these people are out there. We don't we know think who they, they are. are. We think they're we out think, there. We, yeah, we were like, it was, it was pretty sharp. We knew, like, they, like, they were around somewhere. We just had the hope that they would find us. And then when we interviewed them, that's when we learned all these great stories. I mean, we had, you know, one student who uh, moved his family to another state so he could move from yeah. Colorado he, to Chicago. Yep, he moved his family yeah, in Utah. with his yeah. parents, yeah. his wife and his kids yeah. in Utah. And then he came to Chicago for three months. To get a job, and now he's back in uh, Colorado. And he's working in Colorado. Yeah. yeah, he's working Yeah, there. we had people who came from Florida. We had a, you know, a 21-year-old. Philippines. Came eight, like 8,000, over 8,000 miles from the Philippines to Chicago. Um, like so many great stories. Wow. A guy come in with a $6,000 check before we interviewed him, saying, like, I just quit my job two weeks ago. Table. I'm ready to Let do this. Let me in. Um, so, like, <laughs> it was just, like, those are just, like, four of the amazing stories from just the first class, but... Um, that's when we knew that we had something because these, these people had made way more sacrifices than we had uh, to do this. And this was a program that had never existed. It was just a promise on a website. Um, and so that's when we knew. But even with that, we had to say, like, okay, you made all, this, all these sacrifices. Now we hope that you can actually learn in three months because if you don't, then the Code Academy is a great story. <laughs> like, oh, it was great how they were able to, like, start, and then they all failed. And, like, we would have been done, which would have been great. But we were able to be successful, and that's when we knew we could what'd do you, more. What did you learn from the first class about how to make it better as you went along? Oh, everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. We only had curriculum for the first week. Yeah. So we talked like, no, yeah, that's all we had. We had yeah. the first week's curriculum. We were, we're going to teach this first week. And after we teach the first week, we'll figure out what we're going to teach the second week. Yeah. And we basically learned how the students learned during the first week. And then we sat down and said, all right, this is what we're going to do. We had like an idea of what we wanted to teach yeah. for the quarter, but we didn't figure it out until over time because Jeff is brilliant. Jeff Cohen is probably one of the best teachers on the planet, bar none. Like, com like not even just in web development, just as a teacher, he's one of the best communicators. And he just fell into our laps because he lived near Evanston in Skokie, up in North, like by Northwest. And we just got so lucky yeah. to find this man in Chicago. So, yeah. yeah. So becoming the starter league, that was your question. I apologize for trumping it. No, it's um, great. But so yes, we were Code Academy, as a lot of you know, and I think a lot of you probably make the same mistake that uh, everyone else we talk to does, and you call another company by that name, which is a mistake, because what you are thinking of is CodeCademy.com, CodeCademy.com, not Code Academy. So we launched uh, like four months before they did, but two weeks into launching our website, yeah. Y Combinator releases their batch of startups. Out of them. One is called Codecademy. Yeah. But they have the domain codeacademy.com. So when you type in codeacademy.com, you go to codeacademy.com. Code code yeah. But when you, but we're, and we were a nonprofit, remember? So we were codeacademy.org. Yeah. So we had to build our business off of codeacademy.org while competing with a confusing name with a site that had millions of users at this point called codecademy.com. It sucked. Yeah. Um, it was really hard. That was probably one of the most challenging and gut-wrenching things we had to go through for the first you know, six to nine months in operating because we had to deal with that question every day. And I go to sleep every night not sure as to our future because I don't know whether our brand is going to shine through because of this name conflict. But we were doing so much yeah. good for people, and they were too. We wanted to support each other, but there was just kind of this gridlock. So I met with the founder multiple times, and we ended up uh, trying to come to some sort of resolution with the name conflict. But more than that, Mike and I realized we had a larger opportunity. We realized that we weren't teaching just code. It got to the point where, you know, Mike and I started this because, not because we wanted to become programmers and get jobs and make money. We started this because we believed that software was one of the best ways to solve meaningful problems with technology for people that we cared about. That's why we started it. So we wanted to teach people design, we wanted to teach people development, and we wanted to teach them how to actually think through what problem do I want to solve with design and development, and how do I do it, and how do I execute on that. That's why we did it. So we realized that we aren't just academy for coders. We're, like, at this point, we're starting. We're starting companies, we're starting careers, we're starting products, and we're allowing people 
to join into a community, a league of people that uh, could support each other for the rest of their lives. So that was the idea of the Starter League. We were like, you know what? We are so much more than a code academy. We are so much more than that, and let's show people that we are. It's what so, business are you really in? Yeah, it's yeah. what business are you really in? And we put a stake in the ground. He said, this is the business we're in. We're in the business of starting companies, products, and careers, not just getting a job and learning how to code. Yeah, that's great. So that was, it was so much more for us. And then in tandem with that was our awesome announcement with 37 Signals. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that because yeah. that was an exciting announcement and, a, and a, big, a big thing for you guys. Yeah, so I mean 37 Signals, for those of you who don't know, they're uh, like I guess one of the most prominent software companies. Uh, they uh, have software called Basecamp that's very, very popular for project management. Um, but on top of that, uh, they also created this technology called Rails. Uh, Ruby on Rails to be specific, but it was Rails that they created, uh, the language Ruby that they leveraged. Um, the Rails framework and uh, the Ruby language are some of the most prominently used technologies in software, and that's what, my, that's what I taught myself for that year. So I knew these guys. I knew they were in Chicago. They were my favorite company in the world. There was 37 Signals and Apple. These were the two companies I admired the most. Well, and, and they've and got a great story themselves. Yes, yeah. uh, they do. You know, Signals versus Noise, their blog is a yeah. great blog, very popular. Jason's written these Jason books. Jason Fried wrote that book that I told me not to quit my job, that I quit <laughs> my job like reading. And I, I based a lot and, of and how they, aren't they, don't they have an investment from Jeff Bezos? Didn't he yeah, so, yeah, so uh, Amazon, uh, Jeff Bezos is the only investor in 37 Signals. Um, and that was a while ago. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they have an interesting uh, story, and I don't know, I really looked up to them, and I just kept in touch. I, I, I knew, I met Jason at a Ruby class yeah. that I took before we started the school. I met Jason there once, and I just kept in touch through email, and uh, I just got to know him periodically through email from time to time. I would write emails that are like two or three paragraphs long because I'm so excited, and he would respond with like one sentence, like, cool, that sounds good. And that would make luck. you think for like uh, a, an hour or two of like how to reflect, respond. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I went through all that, but then... Um, Something happened where we were getting a lot of success and a lot of traction, and I think it was around the time we had our first demo day in this room yeah. where we shoved a certain number of people in here, <laughs> and uh, it was really awesome. <laughs> but anyway, after he heard about that and our success with the Moxie Awards and things, he reached out and said, hey, let's get lunch. So I got lunch with Jason, and it was just cool because I felt like I was sitting across from a celebrity. Like in my head, I'm like, it's Jason Fried. Um, but, but when I was talking, I realized he's just a human being yeah. who you know, has his quirks, and he's really smart, but he's weird too, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we t I told him how the business was going, who I was, what I was about, and we started having more conversations. Yeah. So we got lunch again, and then we got lunch again. Then we and, got then, breakfast. and then we got breakfast. <laughs> and then Mike reached out, and then he said, hey, you know, I, I want to meet Mike. And we started talking. He's like, you know, I've been thinking. Like, I'm really impressed by what you guys are doing. I'm trying to figure out how can 37 Signals help you all, yeah. like, do this? Like, is there any way that we can, you know, support you guys? And, you know, he's like, I've got some ideas, but, you know, I'm curious to know what you think. And I'm sitting there like, uh, you're, you're helping me right now. Like, yeah. You're talking to I me. I mean, just like a year before, yeah. like, we were reading, like, Rework, like, on my couch. And then, like, a year later, I'm, like, across from Jason, like, eating, like, you know, wa chicken and waffles or whatever. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so. but it was kind of funny, though, because what, what was amazing about that, the first time I met him with Neil, is that, you know, he was saying, like, oh, you guys were really successful, and we really admire that, but, like, your story and how you, you know, were built and what you're about and, like, the philosophy and the values that you have, it's, like, almost wrong for us not to help you. And that's yeah, when I heard yeah. that. When we heard that from Jason, it's like, okay, that's awesome, but, like, it felt so surreal to hear that from, you know, someone that we've looked up to for so long to say, like, you know, it's almost, like, you know, wrong for us not to help you guys out, and we want to help you in a more substantial way in the long term and not just, like, a, you know, kind of flash in the pan. Way, so that was amazing. Yeah, and it was it was a it was great. It couldn't have been better because that company, Thirty Seven Signals, they really value education. Yeah. Like it is is teaching is a very important concept to them. So what we were doing really resonated because they've always been passionate about it. The only problem is that they're a software business and a company, and they're building products all the time. So they can't really invest as much time in the teaching side, um, even though they have a built-in classroom in their you know in their space. So uh, we filled the void. We filled the void for them. Uh, they, they want to see us succeed. They want to help us uh, do all the things that I just talked about, um, empowering people to start careers, products, and companies, and ship great software. So they're going to help us do that. Yeah, so they, they invested in us, but that's not more, even the yeah. biggest part because it was more of a formality. Oh, but it's a big statement. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is a big statement because 37 Signals has never invested yeah. in any company before. 
So that was a big deal. It was a really big deal and a big statement to the software community and to the Chicago community, two Chicago companies coming together this way. Mm -hmm. um, but really it was a formality, I say that, because it was just a small amount so Jason could justify all the time he was spending with us, <laughs> helping us out. Yeah. And he was like, I'm spending so much time, this, I need to make sure that you know, I can justify this to the team and get everybody on board. So I remember we, he didn't tell anyone that it was going to happen except for David. David Hemmeyer Hansen, his partner in the creator of Ruby on Rails. And I spoke at their all-team meeting. So 37 Singles is primarily a remote company, but they fly in their entire team, 36 people, um, to the Chicago office once or twice a year. And I came to speak, to tell them my story. And then Jason told them at that event that, hey, by the way, we're investing in the Starter League. So welcome to the family. So it was great because now we've been a part of one of the best companies in the world, in my opinion. Yeah. And we're learning every day from them how to be uh, better business leaders as well as better software creators. That's great. That's great. What a, what a great story. Yeah. A great testament to yourself.